YouTube, what's good? It's your boy Darren, man. I'm the Bowtie Fragrance Guy. You know what we talk about on the channel. We talk about fragrances. We talk about fashion. Get into a little bit of lifestyle things as well. So if that kind of content sounds interesting to you, consider subscribing to the channel. And also make sure you go ahead and hit the bell icon as well. That way you get notified. Anytime I upload new content on the channel. Alright guys, so you see the title of today's video. Earlier this week I released my top 10 designer fragrances or the best designer fragrance from the top 10 most popular designer fragrance houses. Today, we're going to be looking at the niche side of things. I have my coffee, of course. Yeah, man. Gotta have that stuff. So I have my coffee here and I'm going to be getting into what it, I consider to be 10 of the most popular niche fragrance houses. And again, I'm going to be choosing my favorite from each one. I don't want anybody coming over here coming and saying, man, why you didn't choose? Because I didn't. Because this is my list and these are my choices. Now, your mileage may vary. You may have another fragrance from these houses that you consider to be your favorite, but these are mine. And like I said in the designer fragrance video, oftentimes, for the various reasons why you may follow a fragrance reviewer, uh, besides personality and things of that nature, Obviously, most of the time you like their recommendations or their style and fragrances. So with there being so many fragrances in the world, I thought a video like this would be really, really helpful for those of you that really like my taste in fragrances. When you talk about 10 of the most popular niche houses, this list will include my favorite from each of those brands. So if you want to see what's on the list, you know how we rock, you know how we get down. Keep it locked right here. Fragrance guy. All right, guys, we're back. Thank you so much for keeping it locked in. We're going to go ahead and jump into the video. Before I do that, let me say this as well. Guys, I understand that niche fragrances are more expensive than design. I have people comment on my video sometimes. What about, you know, less expensive fragrances? You know, talk about gas prices and all that kind of stuff. Listen, at the end of the day, I talk about a lot of stuff. So if you are paying attention to my channel, you understand. I have plenty of videos where I talk about fragrances that are great under the $50 price point. You can go watch one of those videos. Or, as I always recommend, especially when I talk about a list like this, sample these fragrances first, guys. Scent Split. ScentSplit.com. Let it go across the screen. I always have a link down in the description where you can check out any of the 10 fragrances on this list for the most part. I think all of these are on, yeah. All of these are on ScentSplit.com, so head over to ScentSplit, get yourself a 5, 10 ml sample of these fragrances and see how they work for you. Simple. If you have several fragrances in your collection, a 5 or a 10 ml sample can really last you a while. So head over to ScentSplit, check out some of these that you may not have, and see if you like them for yourself. All right, guys, so let's jump into it. First up, House of Creed. Now I will say, honestly, I feel like the House of Creed is kind of on the decline a little bit as it relates to its popularity for several reasons, which I won't talk about on this video, but it was one of the first niche houses that I dove head first into when I really started collecting hardcore. And um, I pretty much have every fragrance from the House of Creed that I want in my collection. Guys, this ain't hard. This is my favorite still. Aventus. It's still my favorite. It's still my favorite. I honestly, Original Santal is a close second. That one is probably a little bit more sentimental and close to my heart. But when you talk about the best fragrance from the range, I think this still takes the cake. Not much I need to say about this. I'm not going to go into notes and all that because, you know, whether you've been collecting fragrances for five minutes or five years, you've heard about this, I'm sure, by now. And for good reason. It's popular for a reason. It's good. And I said this the last time I talked about Creed Aventus when I really put this to my nose and I think about all the fragrances that we call inspired by or clones, dupes, whatever word you want to use, there's still not one fragrance that has quite captured the essence of what this is. 
I'm telling you. And, and again, somebody said I was bragging when I said this, but honestly, this is a 17N01 batch. And I heard that this is one of the best. I don't get as much into that stuff, but I can tell you that this one that I have is phenomenal. And for me, personally, regardless of its popularity, this is still the best from the House of Korea, in my humble opinion. It changed the game. And it's hard to do that. So, first up, from the House of Creed, my favorite is this right here, Creed Aventus. All right, guys, next up. Now, this fragrance house has picked up a lot of uh, traction over the last four or five years or so. And my favorite from the range is this one right here. I'm talking about the House of Initial Parfums, Bless Baraka. Bless Baraka. This stuff is just... stuff is so good. It's so good. This is so good. It's spicy. It's warm. It's sweet. And it's creamy. I love that. You have some amber in here. You have some sandalwood. And you have musk. And they don't list the spices, but it's got to be cinnamon and nutmeg in here. Or either pimento, which is called an uh, allspice. Which kind of have this uh, give you the vibe of cinnamon, nutmeg, as well as cloves. It may be all pimento on here. This, this stuff is phenomenal, man. It's warm, sweet, rich, and sensual. Just the way I like my fragrances. And again, saying that this is the best from the House of Initio is saying a lot because they have some amazing fragrances in their range. Side Effect, Absolute Aphrodisiac, Musk Therapy, Oud for Greatness. I could go on and on. But I'm telling you guys, if you rock with my style, this is the best of the house. So check it out. Again, this was from the initial Parfums. This is called Bless Baraka. All right, guys, next up from the house of Killian. And this is one I had to go sit in the corner and get myself together again uh, when I didn't choose the other fragrance that was in high consideration from this house. We're talking about the house of Killian. And my favorite is this right here, man, Angel Share. Angel Share. Angel Share, Angel Share, and for so long, Black Phantom was my favorite, and Black Phantom is a close second. I, like I said before, man, if this is scale of 1 to 10, and I had to choose 10 to be my best, this is a 10, Black Phantom is a 9.999 infinity. It's that close, but this just edges it out. Cinnamon, the booze, you have the praline in here that gives it that almost cookie or cake kind of sweetness in here. Tonka bean, vanilla, you name it. If it's sweet and gourmand, it's in here. And this stuff is absolutely phenomenal. I love the fragrance category of gourmands. And this is at the top of the list, man. This stuff is so good. This stuff is so good. You got to try it if you like gourmands. So that's why I chose this one, man, again. It just edged out Black Phantom. And it's hard for me to say that as much as I love that fragrance. But this gives, gets the slight edge. Check it out, guys. It's called Angel Share. All right, guys, coming up next, we're going to talk about the house of Roja Parfums. My God, you talk about a laundry list of fragrances from that house that I could have chosen. But at the end of the day, when I did this list, guys, when I had two or three fragrances that were in consideration, it's the smell test. You put it to your nose. What does it do to you? What does it make you feel? And at the end of the day, this one won out from the house of Roja Parfums, Creation E. Creation E. Now, obviously... Is this the most popular fragrance from the range? Probably so. Definitely one of the most popular fragrances from the House of Rosia. And if you would have just asked me last week, what do you think your favorite Rosia fragrance is? I would have told you Diaghilev, or I probably would have said Burlington 1819, which is a fragrance I've talked about a lot here more recently. But when I pulled out all three of those fragrances and I put them down in front of me and I put them to my nose, this one moved me the most. It moved me the most, and that's what this is about. Fragrances are about what fragrances really speak to you. You can have three fragrances that smell great, but when you put them to your nose, when you put them on your skin, where does it take you? How does it move you? What kind of feelings do, the, do those fragrances evoke? And this is the winner for me at the end of the day. And like I said, they have some amazing offerings. So at the end of the day, I chose this one for good reason. It's boozy. It's probably the best boozy fragrance I've ever put my nose on. Go check it out, guys, from the House of Roger Parfums. Again, this is Creation E. All right, guys, so next up is the House of MFK, Maison Francis Kirk John. And the fragrance that I chose for my favorite is this one right here. Oud Satin Oud. Oud. 
Ooh, sat and moved. Now, obviously, it was very close between this and Baccarat Rouge 540. But again, when I put them to my nose, this speaks to me more. Oud, of course you have rose, saffron, incense. The Bulgarian rose, there's Bulgarian rose in here and another uh, variety of rose. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's, it, 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 it is jammy. It's a jammy rose, but at the same time, it's kind of fresh. So those two different varieties of rose that they use in here really work in combination together to give a very unique take on the typical rose oud fragrance. And this stuff is just, oh my God. Talk about a sexual, talk about a sensuality uh, in a bottle. It's this stuff right here, man. And like I said, it was really, really close between this and Baccarat Rouge 540, but at the end of the day, this one spoke to me more. So that's why I chose it. So my choice from the House of Amazing Francis Kirk John. Guys, check this one out. This is called Oud Satin Mood. All right, guys, next up is the House of Frederick Mall. I did a video on my top 10 Frederick Mall fragrances. If you have not seen that, I'll make sure I link it up here because you guys need to check that out. We talk about an amazing fragrance house that has some very unique fragrance offerings that I think if you really took the time to examine and search the range, you will find something that really works for you and speaks to you personally. You guys know what my favorite is, so we're gonna make this short and sweet, but it's this one right here, man. Yep, you guessed it, Portrait of a Man. <laughs> now, somebody asked me before, and they said, well, what's Portrait of a Man? That's just what I call it. Portrait of a Lady, of course, is the actual name of this fragrance, and you have rose, patchouli, and incense uh, in this fragrance, and it's absolutely phenomenal. One of my favorite perfumers in the world, Dominique Ropion, composed this fragrance, as well as a quite a few others from this particular uh, house that are really, really good. But this stuff is phenomenal, man. I love rose-based fragrances. I've gotten to the point now where I have so many, I'm kind of cooling off on purchasing a lot of rose scents. But this stuff is absolutely top notch. Again, rose, patchouli, incense are the main things you're gonna get from this. And I've said it before and I say it again, in one day, this is this has the record for the most compliments that I've ever received. I got seven compliments and one day wearing this for men and women alike. They were complimenting me when I wore this fragrance and it just really works well on my skin. And once again, skin chemistry, what a fragrance does to you and for you when it hits your skin are very important and is what it really is all about at the end of the day. And for me, this is one of the absolute best fragrances in my entire collection. So it had to win from that particular house, although you have some great ones like Musk Rebel Jour, uh, French Lover, as well as a few others that were in consideration. They just can't beat this one. So the number one spot goes to this, Portrait of a Lady, or in my case, probably your case, Portrait of a Man. All right, guys, so the next fragrance house that we want to talk about, this particular house, uh, it doesn't seem to be really popular in the fragrance community, but when you talk about in the world at large, this is one of the most popular, if not the most popular niche fragrance brand outside of Creed, and that's bond number nine. And my choice went to this one right here, man. Bleaker Street. Bleaker Street. It had to be Bleaker Street. And of course you guys know, if you've been following me for a while, you know how much I love New York Oud, right? But when I look at uh, New York Oud and I compare it to this, and I put it side by side, and I think about, again, what speaks to me, and I look at originality. Rose Oud, there's a lot of Rose Oud combinations out there, but there's no other Bleecker Street on the market. Uh, somehow they got a, took a fresh green kind of uh, initial fragrance DNA and made it creamy, sweet, and gourmand on the dry down with things like blueberry, caramel, patchouli, sandalwood, and of course the, the violet leaves in the opening. This stuff is phenomenal. I mean, look at the bottle, you smell the fragrance, it is absolutely phenomenal. A lot of people talk about this being a great spring scent, which it is, but with the way it's composed, with the sweetness on the dry down and those more gourmand elements, you can wear this thing year round. It's signature scent worthy. And to me, it is the best from the Bond Number no. 9 house. So check it out, guys, if you haven't yet. As my man Kevin Sanders will say, this is Prince in a Bottle. This one is called Bleaker Street. All right, guys, next up, another fragrance house that over the past couple years has become one of the more popular. Uh, niche brands and that being the House of Parfums de Marley. You talk about a line of fragrances that it was hard for me to choose my favorite. My goodness. But at the end of the day after much consideration 
This one got the nod. That's Carlisle. Carlisle. Carlisle got the nod, man. It was really close, man. You had Pegasus. You had Pegasus exclusive. You have Leighton. Leighton exclusive. Wajon. Hobden. Oh, my God. Honestly, I really almost could have chosen any of those that I just talked about. But this got the slight edge because it kind of gives me what I love about all those fragrances that I just talked about and put it in one bottle. And I think ultimately that's why, ultimately that's why Carlisle won out. You got that nice spicy nutmeg on the top with the green apple. Um, but when it dries down, of course, you get that sweetness. You get the tonfa bean in here as well. That creaminess in here. And this thing just really works. Like I said, if I had to choose my top three, would be this, Layton, and Wajon. And I kind of got the best of all those worlds in this one bottle. And that's why I got the nod for the number one spot. So check this one out, guys. If you're looking for one from the House of Parfums de Marley, this is one of my recommendations. This one is called Carlisle. All right, guys. Next up, the House of Amwaj. You talk about hard. This one was really, really hard for me to choose my favorite. I'm going to explain to you why in just a moment. But at the end of the day, again, when I did the smell test, this one won. Reflection Man. Reflection Man. This one, ultimately, when I put those fragrances to my nose that I was considering, this one. This is an older formulation, guys. This one doesn't have the magnetic cap on it. So this one has the old um, non-magnetic cap. Stuff is just great, man. I, <laughs> white florals. White florals and sandalwood. Primarily jasmine and sandalwood is what you're going to get out of this. Pettigrain. This stuff is phenomenal. Now, it was really close because when I put... There were four fragrances that I really considered in this particular house. That was this. It was Dear Man. Um... Jubilation 25 and also Beach Hut Man. I love all four of those fragrances. But at the end of the day, again, this one spoke to me just a little bit more. And that's saying something because as great as Jubilation 25 is, is as much as I, I've touted and talked about Dear Man over the past year or so, and Beach Hut Man as well, sometimes it's hard to beat some of the original, some of the earlier releases from a lot of these fragrance houses. And that was the case with Reflection Man. This was released in 2007. And sometimes fragrances released earlier can get kind of lost in the shuffle when there's so many fragrances that have come out after it. But when you go back and smell this, it's really hard to beat it. And that's why it won the top spot. So check this one out, guys. Again, this is called Reflection Man. All right, guys, and last but not least, the House of Jerjoff. Another one that was really difficult for me to choose a winner. But ultimately, I had to choose this one, and this is called 40 Knots. 40 Knots. Now, I recently acquired Pico Viadama from Jerjoff. So you have fragrances like Pico Viadama from the Casamorati line. You have 1888. Uh, you have Jerjoff Neo, Kobe, uh, Alexand Alexandria 2. Uh, which is another fragrance I have that I really adore from this house, Italica, and you guys know how much I love Gourmands, but ultimately, I had to choose this one. I, had, I would say the close runner-up was Pico Viadama, because that's really, really growing on me, but I haven't had it that long. That's an amazing aldehydic uh, fragrance. But this stuff, the complexity, the versatility, this is the one fragrance that Many fragrance reviewers are challenged to find out what is the best season for this because it's so complex. At one point, you think it's winter on the dry down. At one point, you think it's spring. At one point, you think it's summer. At one point, you think it's fall. This fragrance is one of the most complex fragrances that you ever put your nose on that still has a very appealing quality to it. And that's why I chose it as the number one. It's a very unique fragrance. There's not anything else that I've ever smelled like this as well. And in a world of fragrances where if you have oftentimes two or three notes in a fragrance and it's the same as another fragrance, people will often, of course, draw a lot of, a lot of comparisons and saying this is a clone that smells like this or that. It's really hard to do that with, with this fragrance because it's so complex and so well done. And that's why it is my favorite. So check this one out, guys. Definitely get a sample of this stuff from the House of Jerjoff. This is called 40. 
knots. But all right, guys, that is it. That's my time, man. I hope you enjoyed this video today. As always, I sincerely appreciate your time and attention to these videos. You guys don't have to watch, but you do. And I sincerely appreciate that. And don't forget to make sure you take a few moments to go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you're sharing these videos out to some other folks if you think you can use this information or find it entertaining. Because I'm your guy, Darren. I'm the Bowtie Fragrance Guy. I love to look good, and of course, I love to smell amazing. So until next time, guys, keep looking good. Keep smelling even better. I'll catch you on the flip side.